So let's talk about my experience with it over the past couple of weeks. Where I look at slotting this trainer in with all other trainers is... Now the big question, how silent is it? What's up, Trainiacs? This here is the Stack Zero Silent, allegedly from Stack Zero Trainer, and this is probably the single most sought after review that all of you have been waiting for. So let's talk about my experience with it over the past couple of weeks, the good, the bad, what I would want to improve with it, and if it's gonna be sticking around in the old pain cavern here. So originally when I first started trying out the trainer here, I was really struggling with how I wasn't going to give it a negative review, to be perfectly honest with you. And the reason for that is a few fold. Number one, the user experience setting this thing up for me was not very good. The instruction manual, it didn't have pictures of what part was what. There were things in the instruction manual like it said a charging cable is not included and then there was a charging cable. The steps weren't really sequential. Things like pairing to Zwift, it paired as a power meter, which makes sense because all it measures is power, but because it's a trainer, I was trying to pair it as a trainer. And there were just a ton of really little things that I was racking my brain going like, oh my God, like, why is this so difficult? And looking at say this user guide that I got, it is nothing but text. They're actually just now in like the week after I got this trainer releasing a new user guide and quick setup manual. So in my case, I reached right back out to the founder and CEO and said like, hey, Andrew, what's up? He sent me a PDF of the new user manual. I went, oh, that is super simple, straightforward, very easy to understand. The next issue that I had with it was the road feel, which is one of the biggest things that everyone has asked about. Does it feel as good as the kicker? Does it feel as good as a fluid trainer? Does it feel as good as a magnetic trainer? Where I look at slotting this trainer in with all other trainers is basically in line with you get what you pay for, but with a little bit of a twist in this case. So let's look at the budget of trainer. I'm gonna make some room. In between about $100 and $200, you're gonna be dealing with a magnetic trainer that is very, very loud, feels like sand, has dead spots. The road feel as you progress through speed is not very good, but at the other end, in the $1,000 plus model, you've got things like the Kicker, the Tac-X Neo, where the road feel feels fantastic. Fluid trainers are kind of in between in that three to $600 price point, and that's where this is coming in. It's coming in at around, I think, $550 Canadian, so it's actually very cheap because we have Monopoly money. So it's actually further down towards about $400, and when you look at the $400 trainers, the road feel on this, once you dial it in, is actually really comparable. You've gotta do a couple of things that I wasn't doing early on. Number one, you need to take this giant weight and put it onto your hub so that there's more weight on the outside of the rim. And what happens when you do that is you've got more inertia and it's going to cause the wheel to keep the wheel speed, the turning speed of the wheel, higher for longer. And that is one of the critical factors to actually getting a good road feel. Again, after I talked to Andrew, he said a couple of things. Make sure that you are calibrating your top end power to be 90 to 95 RPM, like a nice high RPM, and you want that at the very last gear. Once I did that, the road feel became immensely better. All the dead spots that I was experiencing early on, they went away. And because I was able to get my cadence up to a nice high number, and the wheel speed was at a nice high number, the road feel was much more consistent. Now that said, the couple of things that you need to be aware of is you have to keep that wheel speed up for the road feel to stick around. 
If you end up dropping down to say around 85, 80 cadence, you're gonna get some dead spots. Like the one time that I really started opening it up, I wanted to see what this thing was capable of. It's when I was doing five, 600 watts, but I was doing it in 85 cadence and what was going on is because my cadence was lower, the wheel speed was lower and I was basically getting too much magnetic force. My cadence was getting crushed out and I couldn't hold that cadence, couldn't hold that power for longer than a few seconds. And I think that that's just gonna be the nature of dealing with this trainer because that's how it built. It's relying so much on that wheel speed to keep up the power, keep up the road feel, that it's gonna be tough to get those really high bursts of intensity for too long if you don't keep the cadence up. Now speaking of that, some of the questions that we got were, how does it end up functioning when you start really throwing the bike around? Well, this is incredibly light. You fold these babies up and this is like, I don't know, maybe 20, 25 pounds. This is very easy to fit under a bed, into a closet. So I was actually skeptical of how stable it would be. And it was actually pretty good considering how light it was. There's a little bit of shake from side to side, but it's not so much that you can totally throw the bike around. So that was decent. Now the big question, how silent is it? Well, the trainer itself is dead silent. There are no moving parts on this. There is no friction. So it is actually very, very quiet. What actually does make some noise is your chain and your cassette and how loud that is, is really dependent on how true your gearing is and how clean your drivetrain is. If it's really clean, expect a noise of like a very soft, quiet person talking. Whereas my trainer, the kicker, which is three times the cost of this, is like a normal person talking. The decibel meter was reading about the same. This was around 70 decibels, whereas the kicker was around 73. In practical terms, however, like what you can actually hear, this seems quite a bit quieter for some reason. So here's the big question. Am I gonna be keeping this trainer, kicking out the kicker, moving this in? No, I'm sorry, Stack Zero. And there's a few reasons for that. Number one is even though on their website they say that it works with Zwift and Trainer Road, it's not actually a smart trainer. I think there's a little bit of confusion there. This doesn't get controlled by any of those training apps it just pairs with it so that you can see your power on the screen. That's a bit of a downside because in my opinion, I don't really want my power to be coming from this because when I get out onto the road in race season, I want that power to be consistent. So to get my power appearing on the Zwift screen, I had to pair with this, unpair my P1 power pedals. And what that means is when I get out onto the road in race season, my P1 power pedals aren't going to be the same power that I was training at, develop some inconsistencies. The second thing, that road feel is good at the sweet spots. As long as you're doing 85 to 95 cadence and you're keeping that wheel at the nice high speed like I recommend, it's good. But I am a big believer in developing yourself as a total cyclist so that you are just as strong cycling at 65 to 80 RPM as you are at 95 to 110 RPM. This doesn't quite have that ability to go all across the spectrum and maintain the road feel, but I don't think that I'm the person that this trainer is meant for. I got this place, I got the pain cavern. I can get as loud and rambunctious as I want and it doesn't matter if this is completely silent because that benefit doesn't really appeal to me. But if you start looking at who it might appeal to, it's people that need an absolute silent trainer, that they're doing their training inside with somebody sleeping in early morning or late night. They're in condos, they're in apartments, they're in places that they can't go on a super loud trainer. And at that $400 price point, you're dealing with magnetic trainers and fluid trainers, which are extremely noisy, Magnetic trainers, I would almost just throw out the window because their road feel is so awful. Fluid trainers, you're dealing with an immensely heavy unit. And for this, you're getting a $400 trainer with decent road feel. It's very easy to pack up, 
pack away, put under a bed, put in your closet, take to a group ride. You can do standing sets with it. You don't have to switch out to a stupid blue trainer tire. I hate those tires, by the way. The only thing that you've got to be aware of is that the user experience, it might be a little clumsy over the next year as Stack Zero builds out their documentation, builds out their YouTube videos. There's more people like me, like DC Rainmaker, doing more content about this. And the more resources there are, the longer Stack Zero is around, the better that experience is going to be. So there you go, Trainiacs. If you weren't already subscribed and you liked the review, hit that subscribe button below. If you were subscribed and you've been waiting to hear about this near silent trainer, smash that like button. Smash it. Hit it. Drop kick it. Mm. Later, Trainiacs.